This time it's from Guns to Bangers, five firearms manufacturers who would go on to build motorbikes. Being a firearms manufacturer is all well and good when there's a war on. But what do you do when the world's gone all peaceful? Well, you need to find some other business to keep the factory rolling. In the Victorian era, many such manufacturers would go on to build bicycles. But the motorcycle is an even better fit. After all, you can use the machine tools used to bore out barrels and guns to bore out barrels and engines. Which is why, of course, in England they are referred to as barrels. And there were indeed a number of companies that would make this transition. And so here are five gunsmiths who went on to build motorcycles. FN FN or Fabrique Nationale de Hertzdal, sorry French speakers, was a Belgian company established in 1889 to build firearms and ammunition. In 1901 the company began producing motorcycles but were voted out their best known for their 1905 362cc shaft drive in line 4. Designed by Paul Calicom, it is said to be the world's first series produced four cylinder motorcycle. The design would survive into the 1930s and would greatly influence similar American machines. Following the Second World War, FM would re emerge producing side valve and overhead valve unit construction machines of 249, 344, 444, and 498ccs. The first models used girder forks although later this would be replaced by a system which used unusual rubber dampening before more conventional looking telescopic forks would arrive in 1951. But unfortunately in the latter part of the 1950s the company began to experience something of a downturn in line with the general decline in motorcycle sales in Europe as a whole as people moved towards cheap cars. There would be split single two strokes developed of smaller capacity and later a move towards mopeds. But unfortunately the company continued to decline and in 1967 the last FM moped left the factory. Royal Enfield Well, the story of Royal Enfield as a motorcycle manufacturer is a little bit convoluted. It all started with a chap called George Townsend in 1851, who established a factory in Redditch to build sewing machines of all things. And in 1882, his son, also named George, began to use the factory to produce parts for the cycle industry. But unfortunately in 1891 the company would hit financial trouble and one Albert Eady would be employed by the banks to run the company. Now Eady was something of a sharp operator and he won contracts to supply precision parts to the firearms industry and specifically the government's Royal Small Arms Factory in Enfield in Middlesex and also its offshoot in Sparkbrook, Birmingham. And because of this contract Eady was able to use the brand name Royal Enfield, a name he would carry over to his cycle subsidiary which he established in 1896, under the moniker Built Like a Gun. A phrase which slightly unfortunately can be understood in either one of two ways. Things did seem to go well however, and in 1901 they constructed their first motorcycle, and in 1902 their first car. And while car production would prove to be somewhat of a loss leader, the motorcycles definitely weren't, and the company flourished. In the early years the company was best known for its big singles, with the first bullet sports model being introduced in the 1930s. And famously, in 1955, the company would establish a factory producing the Royal Enfield Bullet in Madras, India, modern Chennai. The Redditch factory would continue and, like the rest of the British industry, produce parallel twins, culminating in the Interceptor II in the late 60s. In 1967, investment company E and H.P. Smith sold Royal Enfield to Norton Villiers for £82,500. However, Royal Enfield was quite a small company and didn't enjoy the same US sales as some of its larger competitors. So Norton Villiers management decided to close the factory quite simply because the factory ground was worth more for real estate than the profits that the company could turn over. This also meant of course that Norton Villiers had a share in the Royal Enfield factory in India. However, the collapse of MVT in the mid 70s would leave the Indian factory to go it alone. Which of course they most certainly did and after selling the 1955 bullet for a number of years under new ownership, the company began to grow and now manufactures many more machines than were ever produced in Redditch. CZ 
CZ factory was opened in 1919 as an offshoot factory in Czechoslovakia of the Skoda Works, who were of course an armaments manufacturer at that time. And so the factory was established to essentially produce small arms. However, due to the downturn in weapons requirements following the end of World War I, the company were diversified and absorbed a bicycle manufacturer. This would prove successful and in 1932 the company began production of essentially their bicycles fitted with small engine kits. And this would be followed three years later by the first true CZ motorcycle. Production would of course cease after the German occupation during World War II, but would re-establish later in the 1950s, with some stylish small capacity two-stroke machines, but also a rather iconic CZ501. This was the CZ, a scooter of somewhat unique design. The machines would prove very popular, making CZ one of the largest and most successful manufacturers of motorcycles at the time. And it was during this period that the company went into Grand Prix road racing in the 250 and 350 classes, culminating in their 1969 Type 860, a dual overhead cam V4 with 16 valves and an 8-speed gearbox. But Grand Prix success would elude them. But the company would have considerably more success in motocross, when in 1963 they became the first two-stroke motorcycle to win an FAM World 500cc Grand Prix, when Vlastimil Valich rode a machine of just 263ccs took the chequered flag at his home Grand Prix, the first win for a two-stroke in a 500cc event. And in the 1960s, they would come to dominate motocross, with such innovations as the first use of an expansion chamber exhaust on a motocross machine, following on from their successful use in road racing by MZ. The company would win seven world championships during the 60s, but in the 70s would begin to struggle. And the company would of course suffer following the collapse of the Eastern Bloc, and CZ would eventually sell its motorcycle division to Kojiva in 1993. Benelli Now Benelli is unique on this list because it actually started firearm production sometime after motorcycle production and not the other way around. Benelli was established in Pissarro, Italy in 1911. The story goes that after losing her husband, Teresa Bonny Benelli would use what capital she had to establish an engineering company to employ her six sons. The company became successful servicing and repairing other people's bicycles and motorcycles. Eventually, however, they would begin to manufacture components for bicycles in their own right before going on to produce their first motorcycle in 1919 and in 1920 would produce its first power unit. Inspired by a theoretical study published by Edward Turner in 1925, Giuseppe Benelli would develop an overhead cam 175cc four-stroke in 1927. The machine would prove very popular in lightweight competition racing, then very popular in Italy, and this would firmly establish the name of Benelli in the motorcycle business, and especially in competition. And in fact, by the outbreak of World War II, the company had developed a four-cylinder, four-stroke, 250 with a supercharger producing 52 horsepower at 10,000 RPM. But its development would be brought to an abrupt end by the outbreak of hostilities. With war's end, the factory was heavily damaged, and it would take the brothers almost four years to re-establish production. When they did, it was with a 98cc two-stroke lightweight machine, which they dubbed the Leoncino. The machine was a great success, with 45,000 units being sold up until 1960. However, the 60s would see a major downturn in the Italian motorcycle market, forcing Benelli to sell their machines under the Riverside brand for the Ward's catalogue in the United States, something they would continue to do right into the late 60s in the introduction of the Tornado 650 parallel twin. At the end of the 60s, the company was purchased by Alejandro Di Tommaso, an Argentine businessman. Now, Dieter Meso had very specific ideas about where he thought the motorcycle industry was going to be heading, and he believed the best approach was to copy what the Japanese manufacturers were doing. And so in 1974, the company unveiled the 500 Quattro. This was a 500cc single overhead cam motorcycle with an engine that looked almost exactly the same as the equivalent Honda. And this machine would form the basis of the 750C, a six cylinder 750 machine, which produced a silky smooth 75 horsepower claimed and was renowned for its fine steering. But the Dieter years were not easy for Benelli, and even enlarging the Sei out to 900 cc's did not make it a sales success. And the company would fail in the early 80s. But after a failed attempt to restart the company in 1989, 
28-year-old Andrea Maloney would purchase the brand in 1995 and would quickly establish the company to produce small bikes and scooters alongside their larger capacity three-cylinder machines, which were introduced in 1999. And unfortunately, these larger machines would be commercial failures. So in 2005, Maloney decided to sell the company to Quangjing Automotive of China. The new management decided to switch production of the smaller bikes to China, with final assembly of the larger machines continuing in Pissarro. And initially, these machines still used the three-cylinder tray motor, these have now been replaced by a series of parallel twin engines manufactured in China. And indeed sales of these new machines have proved to be very strong, putting the Benelli name on a strong financial footing. Birmingham Small Arms or BSA? BSA or Birmingham Small Arms was established in June 1861 in the Gun Quarter in Birmingham and was effectively a workers' cooperative with a group of smaller manufacturers combining together to make them more able to compete in an increasingly mechanised market. And in fact the 14 founding members were encouraged to do so by the War Office who gave them access to technical drawings which would allow for the production of weapons with a high level of interchangeability. And so BSA grew quickly and rapidly expanded their factory size. However, given the somewhat erratic demand for firearms, the company thought it prudent to diversify, branching out into bicycle production in the 1880s. And after experimenting with power units in the early 1900s, in 1910 they produced their first motorcycle. And given the quality and economies of scale that their automated factory provided, they were able to undercut many of their contemporaries, with the factory's entire production selling out in 1911, 1912 and 1913. But given the company's core business, not surprisingly production would stop during World War I, but would resume shortly thereafter. The company would produce a range of singles and V-twins, but it was a humble 250, later dubbed the Round Tank, that really changed the market, offering inexpensive and effective personal transport for the masses. During the Second World War, the company would focus on firearms, but would also produce vast numbers of the WM-20 side valve. And while the BSA was not the most capable dispatch rider tool, small East manufacturing capacity would ensure that it was produced in the greatest number, allowing the British to field more motorcycles than any other nation. But with the war over, BSA would follow the vast majority of the British manufacturers and produce a parallel twin, the 500cc A7, which would later be joined by the A10650 in 1949, although by this time the BSA range was still topped by the Gold Star 500 single. But ultimately, it would be the greater performance potential and the more user-friendliness of the parallel twin that would see it win out on the road. And the 1960s would see the replacement of the pre-unit A10 with the new A65 and A50 machines. And contrary to popular belief, these do represent a major redesign of the earlier engine, being both lighter and more powerful. And not forget, much simpler to manufacture and therefore less expensive. With 80% of the sales in the USA, BSA were less affected than some of the other manufacturers by the downturn in the British market. But unfortunately, a combination of poor decision making, poor industrial relations, and just plain bad luck would see them falter in 1973. What other bikes or combinations of bikes would you like to see us do in a future video? Maybe you've got a bike we can feature in a test ride? Either way, get in touch below. Hope you enjoyed that video, if you did definitely get to like and subscribe and of course thank you very much for watching.